This is such a classic SAT question. They take something that's kind of normal, uh, percentages, and then they twist it up in such a way that most people are not going to recognize there's any difference between this and what they normally do with percentages. But there's a big difference, and it causes pretty much everyone to get it wrong. Now, I would be suspicious from the start. We're going into this. This is question number 20 out of 30. So technically, we're not in the hard third of the test yet, but we're right up against it. So this is a case where I would start to be really nervous about things that seem too easy. So if you got this wrong, look at your work. Look at your page. Do you have anything written down? If not, then yeah, you, you should have known that you were going to get this wrong. If you're just thinking this through, the odds of a mistake are super high. We're just at that point in the test where we really can't trust our instincts. I also really don't trust my algebra. Um, things just get kind of wacky near the end of the test, and so I'd prefer to work with real numbers. And this question makes that really easy to do because this story is one that I could follow, and it would be much easier to follow with real numbers. So let's take a look. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount off its original price. The total amount she, applied, she paid to the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. Which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? So, okay, what, how should I pick numbers here? How should I arithmetize to better understand the story? Well, let's just say that the original laptop was $100. It's an easy number, and especially with percentages, it's kind of easy to follow because the, the, the multiplication is easy with 100. So let's just follow the instructions. Okay, so this is my original. Then what happens? Uh, it gave a 20% discount off. So 20% discount. Well, I, I could use the calculator, but I already just know off the top of my head that's going to be $80, right? 20% off of 100 is 80. Okay. Then we have a 8% um, sales tax on the discounted price. So, okay, 8% tax. This is where we might need to revert back to a formula. Um, there's lots of ways to think about percentages. My strong preference is that we use what I call the open formula. Okay, it's a way of dealing with percentages specifically designed for the SAT. I talk about it in my study guides. It is a, is a made up thing specifically knowing how the SAT messes with us. So when we have something like a tax, something that's added on, what this open formula tells us to do is we take the original num amount. In this case, the original is now $80. Uh, let's get rid of the dollar sign. And then we multiply by 1 plus or minus P depending on whether we're adding something on or subtracting it. E stands for equals, and then N is the new value. So in this case, the original is going to be multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.08. The percentage is always written as a decimal. And so that means 1.08 times 80, and we can just now use the calculator, 86.40. So after the 86, after the tax, that's 86.40. And so that's what she's paying. So that's also the value of P. So there are two numbers floating around that I really care about. There is the original price and the price that she pays. So what do the answers represent? They represent the original. So when I plug 86.40 in for P, I need to get 100. So watch, let's do it for choice A. We're going to do 0 0.88 times 86.40. And it's a calculator question, so don't be shy about using it. I get 76.032. So not 100. If I do 86.40 divided by 0.8, Eight eight, I get close ninety eight point one eight, but it's got to be a hundred. If I do zero point eight times one point oh eight times eighty six forty point eight times one point oh eight times eighty six forty is seventy four point six four nine six, not a hundred. And that's the answer that most people pick. 
because that's very logical when you're dealing with percentages that we would do all this multiplication, but it doesn't work here. Um, and it's because we're kind of reversing the way that percentages work. So doing this last step, and I gotta be careful that I do parentheses here, I do get 100, and I do have proof that choice D is right. So is that a little more time consuming? Yes. Uh, if we understood percentages perfectly every single time, then we could probably get this a little bit faster without using real numbers and without arithmetizing. But knowing the SAT and knowing myself, this is a very high danger question. It's got percentages, which plenty of times caught are, uh, involve careless mistakes. It's near the part of the test where there's going to be traps and tricks and things, and it's on algebra, which you know, it's hard to know if you've made a mistake because you can't read an equation as well as you can read an actual number. So there's a lot of warning signs telling me to take it slow. You can guarantee these points, but you gotta just like be nervous about what could go wrong and account for it. Um, the real reason that we end up dividing kind of comes back to that open formula again. Except in this case, we're gonna look at all the percentages at once, right? The original value is my O, we would multiply by the percentage, and so we have two kinds of percentages here. We have a 1 plus P, uh, in this case 1 plus the uh, 0 0.08, that's the tax. But we can also do the discount at the same time, 1 minus 0 0.2. And this is why we do plus or minus and, and why that's kind of factored into the formula is when we simplify that, um, it's going to look different than it does in the story. So that's equal to P, the amount she paid, and you'll see what I mean right here. 1.08, 0.8. Right? So 20% discount looks very different in decimal terms. And so the uh, open formula is designed to account for all this stuff. And so sometimes, um, you know, we're doing 1 plus P, or 1 plus the percentage, if it's a, an added percentage, if it's greater than, more than, but other times if it's a discount, it's less a certain percent, that's what we're going to do, one minus. And so now, if they're asking which of the following represents the original, I can see, well, my original, I can get that alone, I can isolate it by dividing by 1.08 and 0.8. And if I do that on both sides, I'll try to stick to the order that they have, these would cancel, and then we'd have the original is equal to P divided by the percentages. And that's weird. Normally we associate percentages with multiplication. Here we see a, a version that involves division. It's still following the exact same rules, but it's just also adding in the SAT rule, the SAT way that they ask about percentages, which is almost always this kind of weird reversal. My formula takes care of that. Hopefully, if you missed it this time, you're more cautious and prepared for the next time.